Okay, oh, well, welcome everybody. Thank you very much for inviting me to speak here. My first time at the Spectator Schools Conference. I'm sure we're all here because we want the same thing, which is the best possible education for all our children. Um, my point about for-profit organisations is that they do what they say on the tin. They make a profit. Um, that's their primary motive, is to make money. Um, and I think that's why very many parents have concerns about this idea, because they want their schools to be primarily about education, not about money. And I think it's quite interesting, actually, that the British independent schools prefer to have charitable status rather than be for-profit, which they could be. And I assume the reason for that is because they feel that the profit motive would interfere with their ethos and their core purpose. I hear all the arguments in favour of for-profit schools, which seem to be primarily about provision of places at a time of austerity. Um, but I think the risks are too high, and I'm going to try and explain to you why I think that is the case. The first one is on quality. Nearly everywhere where this experiment has been tried, the uh, results are quite mixed. There isn't any conclusive evidence that for-profit schools lead to higher standards. In fact, there's quite a lot of evidence that for-profit schools lead to less good standards. Um, in Sweden, uh, it hasn't been an unmitigated success, and in fact, the Swedish government has introduced more regulation now to bring its for-profit schools into a fair framework. Um, in the US, many of the for-profit charters have failed, and they've had to be closed down and transferred to other providers. Um, we've got riots in Chile in the very recent past about education issues, where they have for-profit schools. And in fact, where, where for-profit schools do well, it is usually because they're taking students with higher prior attainment. And when you strip that out, uh, the results are not very, very different to the non-for-profit schools. Um, I think one of my main concerns about for-profit schools is about the quality and fairness, because I think once you have for-profit, schools will be, the results will be, um, profit will be linked specifically to results. And um, in fact, the evidence that we'll probably hear later on, I think, will be about results and test results. But schools would therefore become much more incentivised to take in the pupils who are easiest to teach and the ones most likely to succeed and to get rid of the ones who are less likely to succeed. And I think that's already a big problem in this country. We have a very segregated school system and a lot of selective admissions criteria. And I think adding for profit into the mix would make that even worse. And in fact, in the United States, there's a rather unpleasant term being developed, which is called dreg sifting, which is the opposite of cream skimming, and that means that some schools try and take the more aspirant, motivated, and intelligent poor children and leave the less aspirant, motivated poor children to the bottom because they don't want the drugs. Um, and I think that's what we would see here. We would see subtle hierarchies becoming even worse than they already are. Um, I think there's also a very great concern about what happens when you introduce profit and, and perverse, other perverse incentives. So in America, you're already seeing schools that are falsifying test scores in order to make money, and that's led, led to a couple of court cases already. Now, I, my question would be, do we want, is this the sort of culture that we want in our schools? And I would argue that it isn't, because schools aren't just about test results, they're about very much more than that. They're about social cohesion, they're about inclusion, they're about child well-being, and they're about the roles that schools have in their local communities. Now, you can't easily put a financial value on those things, and my fear is that once the profit is introduced, some of those things will just go out the window. My other fear is about the argument that you should have the right to fail, and a key part of the, 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 the marketisation of schools and the for-profit um, lobby is that schools that aren't successful should be allowed to fail. Um, if you have a market, success is rewarded and failure is also um, condemned. And that may be acceptable for the corner shop, but I don't think it's acceptable for children because they're not like loaves of bread or tins of baked beans. So I think they have a right, if they're enrolled in, in a school, for it to be as successful as possible and not to fail and just be handed over to somebody else. And it, and it will usually be the children, I would imagine, who come from the most, most chaotic and difficult home backgrounds who are in those sorts of schools. So I think it would be much better to try and prevent failure in the first place than let schools fail. I've got concerns about empowerment, localism and the community, because of what we see time and time again is when you introduce for-profit because of the European procurement laws, they're very costly processes and they tend to go to large multinational corporations. I think what you'd end up with is schools not run by small local providers, but by big multinational corporations, and that would remove schools even further from their communities. Parents would have to take their placards to Dubai and Stockholm, not down to the town hall. And I think people like to see you address locally, so I think that's a problem. Finally, I think there's an issue about accountability and transparency. We're already seeing problems with getting information about the funding of academies and free schools because they're semi-independent schools 
and I think that will become very much worse if everything is outsourced. And I think it's important that we know if we're getting value from taxpayers' money. And as the Prime Minister said recently, it's very important to be able to follow the public pound, and that tends to be hard to do with outsourcing. Um, don't be fooled by the argument that for-profit schools will deliver more places. It is the role of the state to give every child a school place. That's a basic human right, and you cannot leave that up to the market. So that, I think that's a, a bogus argument because the market will deliver places in the areas where it's more profitable. It won't necessarily de deliver places where, where they're most needed. Now, if we all want the same thing, I think we can get that without the introduction of for-profit schools. There are many, many examples of excellence in the state sector. 75% of schools are good or outstanding. And they've got there through excellent leadership, good performance management, not, ne not necessarily with performance-related pay, um, by the way, and by good continuous professional development and collaborating and also now increasingly with strong schools helping the weak. And I think we can build on that sort of approach to get excellence in all our schools rather than going down the for-profit route. And my final point is I had a conversation recently with somebody who's quite close to the government and was a previous advocate of for-profit schools and he said he changed his mind on the subject. When I asked him why, he said because he'd met too many of the people who run the companies who want to get into the business. So I don't think we need for profit. I think we can do the same thing without introducing profit into the school system. It just isn't necessary, and we shouldn't go down that road. Thank you.